Good morning. I'm Bailey, the commentator. The theme of today's reading is about prayer, both the power of intercessory prayer and the importance of being persistent in prayer. But it takes faith to pray. As we now gather, let us ask the Holy Spirit to strengthen our faith so that we can pray well. The presider at this Mass is Father Dan. Please stand and let us begin. Our opening song is number 398, Be Thou My Vision, number 398. O Lord of my heart, not be all else to me save that Thou art. Thou my best thought by day or by night, waking or sleeping, Thy presence my life. And thou my true word I ever with thee And thou with me, Lord Thou my great Father I thy true Son Thou in me dwelling And I with thee one Oh, man's empty praise, thou mine inheritance now and always. Thou art the only first in my heart, my King of heaven, my treasure. We gather in prayer in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. That last verse of the song, my King of heaven, my treasure thou art. So God indeed is our treasure. We come and we honor him and we worship him and we give him thanks for his many blessings in our lives. So to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries worthily, let us acknowledge any faults or failures and ask the good Lord to pardon and to help us be our better selves. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the Thanks for your great glory. 
us pray. Almighty ever-living God, grant that we may always conform our will to yours and serve your majesty in sincerity of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. The first reading, a reading from the book of Exodus. In those days, Amalek came and waged war against Israel. Moses therefore said to Joshua, take out certain men and tomorrow go out and engage Amalek in battle. I will be standing on, the t on top of the hill with the staff of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses told him. He engaged Amalek in battle. After Moses had climbed to the top of the hill with Aaron and her, as long as Moses kept his hands raised up, Israel had the better of the fight. But when he let his hands rest, Amalek had the better of the fight. Moses' hands, however, grew tired, so they put a rock in place for him to sit on. Meanwhile, Aaron and Hur supported his hands, one on one side and one on the other, so that his hands remained steadily till sunset. And Joshua mowed down Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. The word of the Lord.
the second reading, Timothy. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, remain faithful to what you have learned and believed, because you know from whom you learned it, and that is from infancy you have known the sacred scriptures, which you are capable of giving you wisdom for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching and refutation, for correction and for training in righteousness, so that one who belongs to God may be competent, equipped for every good work. I charge you in the presence of God and of Jesus, in Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and by, and by his appearing in his kingly power, proclaim the word to persist whether it is convenient or inconvenient, convince, reprimand, encourage through all patience and teaching. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus told his disciples a parable about the necessity for them to pray always without becoming weary. He said, there was a judge in a certain town who neither feared God nor respected any human being. And a widow in that town used to come to him and say, Render a just decision for me against my adversary. For a long time, the judge was unwilling. But eventually he thought, Well, it is true that I neither fear God nor respect any human being. Because this widow keeps bothering me, I shall deliver a just decision for her, lest she finally come and strike me. The Lord said, Pay attention to what the dishonest judge says. Will not God then secure the rights of his chosen ones who call out to him day and night? Will he be slow to answer them? I tell you, he will see to it that justice is done for them speedily. But when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? The Gospel of the Lord. Well, as you heard in the introduction, the theme of our readings today is about prayer and the power of intercessory prayer. In the first reading, when Israel was being attacked by the Amalekites, Moses interceded for them during the battle. As the reading told us, as long as Moses' hands were up in prayer, Israel did well in battle. But as Moses became tired and lowered his hands, Israel began to lose. So then Moses' brother Aaron and their friend Hur supported Moses so that he could sit down 
and continue to intercede for Israel in battle until they won. So the story teaches us that when we become tired in prayer, well, it's okay to ask others for prayers. I remember one time being asked to anoint an elderly parishioner who was hit by a car. Even before she was hit by a car, she was already very frail. And so when she was hit by a car, she was in a coma, and her condition seemed, didn't seem very bright. But a friend suggested to the other friends and parishioners to let's together pray for her at 8 o'clock every night. So we all set our alarms. And then a few days later, she started to improve. And a few weeks later, she was even released from the hospital. Her husband was so elated. He said, wow, this is a really big miracle. Because even the doctors were amazed at her recovery. Someone who was so frail, so delicate. So that story reminded me of the power of intercessory prayer and that there is strength in numbers, right? There's strength in numbers. So don't hesitate to ask others for help and for prayers. In today's gospel, Jesus also taught us to be persistent. Be persistent in prayer. He gave the funny example of a judge who neither feared God nor other human beings, but just to stop this woman from bothering him any further, he would give her, this persistent woman, a just judgment. So Jesus humorously shared that we should pray with that same kind of attitude to God. But it's not because God is hard of hearing or because God is uh, indifferent to us, but because there is a spiritual battle going on, right? There's a spiritual battle. The devil wants us to lose faith. He wants us to give up and turn away from God. That's why the gospel ended with Jesus saying, when the Son of Man returns, Will he find faith on earth, or would we have given up? Will the devil have won and led us all to give up on God? Now, prior to today's gospel, um, the previous chapter, the Pharisees asked Jesus when the kingdom of God will come. So that was Jesus' favorite topic. That was why he came, to establish, to help bring about the kingdom of God. In fact, he taught us to pray for that. Right in the Lord's Prayer, we say, let thy kingdom come. Let thy will be done. So how do we bring about God's kingdom? By doing his will. So when we forgive each other, when we repent and turn ourselves back to God, Jesus said, the kingdom is present. Maybe not fully present, but any time we do things and we help one another, we forgive one another, we support and encourage one another, um, when we work towards peace, right? So the kingdom is present, but not quite fully. But so Jesus taught us to work for that kingdom. And then one day, it will be established. But it may seem impossible now. And so that's why Jesus taught us to be persistent in prayer. The truth is the forces of darkness are strong. I mean, you look at the cross. You know, it's real. It took the devil. It was the, the forces of darkness that had Jesus crucified. You know, so anytime we go up against the devil we better be ready. The devil wants us to lose faith and hope. He wants us divided and separated from each other and from God. So we see that in our families. It's easy to have an argument and to stand our own ground, but it takes a little bit of effort. It takes faith to go and to 
strive to be reconciled to each other. And so we see that also in our world with wars, with nations being divided with each other. You know, and by ourselves, our faith can easily be, be defeated. And that's why coming together to pray, especially at Mass, is so important. You know, anytime you, if you were away from God, the devil's not going to do anything. You're already away from God. But anytime we try to do anything and turn our lives back to God, well, then the devil is going to come and do different things that tries to uh, lead us to give up. So, <laughs> sister's phone is ringing. <laughs> He'll stop. Um, Oh, so that's why it is important for us to gather together to pray at Mass, because when we pray at Mass, it's we're praying together with Jesus. It is Jesus praying with us together. And it also takes courage, right? It takes courage to persevere in prayer when everything feels like it's not going well. You know, I remember something going awfully wrong in our family, and I shared this with you in the past, but it seems appropriate to share it again. Uh, so when that was going on in our family, I would take it to God in prayer. I would pray every day. But you know what it's like when you pray and nothing seems to change and things actually look worse? I felt tired. I'm going to strangle that phone. <laughs> should pray. <laughs> but, but you know what it's like, you know, something serious is happening, and you're taking it to God in prayer, and you're praying, and you're praying, and you're praying, and nothing seems to go well. In fact, in your prayer, things even seem to go, get worse. And so, I felt discouraged. I felt like I didn't even know how to pray. You know, you just run out of steam. There's nothing else. There's nothing more that you can do. And even prayer seems futile. That's when it needs courage. That's when it, courage is needed to persevere. When you're feeling like you're exhausted and run down and you're ready to give up, I finally understood the expression. It's always darkest right before the dawn, right? It's always darkest right before the sun rises. So all the more when things are so dark, all the more we need to persevere, be stubborn in prayer. And, you know, I turned to Mother Mary. I didn't know how else to pray. So I just kept doing the Hail Marys. And Mother Mary, sure enough, it's like, you know, your mom coming and praying beside you. And so even when I didn't know how to pray, she helped me. And sure enough, things began to improve. And our relationships blossom into something so beautiful, so incredibly wonderful. The power of persistent prayer. We've all felt discouraged. Jesus on the cross felt it. But as Jesus teaches us today, persevere because it's a battle for our faith. It's a battle for our soul. The devil wants to defeat us and have us turn away from God and each other. So if you feel tired and exhausted like Moses praying for Israel, turn to others. Ask them to pray with you and for you. And don't hesitate to turn to our Mother Mary, who will pray with us when we don't know how else to pray. Keep saying your Hail Marys in those moments of darkness when you feel alone. And victory will be yours. Amen?
Let us renew our faith and our trust in God as we reprofess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Loving Father, you encourage us to petition you without ceasing day and night. And so in confidence, we offer you these prayers for the church, that it, it, it never falter in its work for justice toward the poor. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our civic leaders, that they never give up their pursuit of common sense, solutions to the problems of homelessness and housing. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For, those, for all of those suffering from persecution or neglect, that they be given strength and courage to assert their human dignity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those deeply wounded in their hearts, that they may find the wisdom to forgive and place their trust in God's plan for their lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are ill, especially Brian Bratt, Charlie Cunningham, Mary Cox, Bob Klump, Jeremiah Guzum, and all those with long-term COVID, that they persist in hope and preserve with faith. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have recently died, especially Lorraine Quinn, Maddie Croy, as well as those who lost their lives from Hurricane Ian, that they may find mercy and eternal comfort. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. This Mass is being offered for the repose of the souls of John and Marianne Fox, and it for an anonymous special intention and thanksgiving. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord. Father of mercy, knowing that you wish us to rely upon you always, we entrust to you these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. The song for the, pre song for the preparation of the gifts is number 397. These alone are enough, number 397.
pray then, my sisters and brothers, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Grant us, Lord, we pray, a sincere respect for your gifts, that through the purifying action of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his Paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy there for these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks 
that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Salvatore, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember John and Mary and Fox, and our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Jesus taught us to call God as our Father, and so with confidence, we pray. Our Father. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer to each other a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
The communion song is number 475, Shelter Me, O God, number 475.
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray that, benefiting from participation in heavenly things, we may be helped by what you give in this present age and prepared for the gifts that are eternal. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We have a few announcements. You may be seated. Our second collection this Sunday is for the relief of those affected by Hurricane Ian. Some of you may have the envelope for the property and liability insurance. If you keep it in the pink envelope, we'll use it for that purpose. But if you take it out of the envelope, the collection will go instead to Catholic Charities USA, which is assisting with relief and recovery. Thank you for your generosity. Ushers, you may now take up the collection. As you've been hearing, our parish festival is coming up next weekend. Get your tickets now for the Carnival Games, Oktoberfest, Dinner Dance, and or Pancake Breakfast. You can get your tickets after Mass or online through our parish website. For more information or to get your tickets, please visit the festival table in the vestibule. Okay, so we're about mid-October. Who has a birthday in October? Oh, I see one, two, three, four, five, six. Is that it? Seven. All right, eight. I too have an, a birthday in October, so maestro? God bless you. <laughs> so we have hospitality after Mass. You're welcome to join us. Uh, it won't cost you, well, whoever sat in the front rows get to go first. And then the ones in the last, it doesn't seem to work that way, does it? The ones in the last always seem to get first. Darn it. <laughs> Please stand. And may the Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace, glorifying the Lord by our lives. Our closing song is number 614, Rain Down, number 614.
darkness and death, God will not leave.